Hi guys and welcome back to the channel, hope you're all doing well. This video is going to be going over three UK stocks which I've never previously mentioned before and which I think right now could be fantastic long term holdings. But if you do like these companies, please do your own research first before buying. The first stock I have for you is, is Decra Pharmaceuticals, who specialise in the manufacturing and marketing of veterinary pharmaceutical products. Their net sales are broken down into the categories named on the screen, with net sales being pretty diversified, with the US accounting for 37.9% of revenue, Europe close to 40%, with the UK making up 8.5% and the other areas with just over 13%. Looking over Decra's share price over the last 5 years, it's clear to see that this stock has been on an uptrend with higher lows and higher highs. After completing a triple topping formation entering into 2022, the share price has capitulated. Even after this huge drop, it gives a market cap of 3 billion, a hefty PE ratio of 50 and a dividend currently yielding about 1.68%. When we look at this on a one year basis, the stock is down almost 50%, which when you get that type of price action, you need to look into this a little bit more detail to identify if this is either a resetting of the valuation or is the business in turmoil. The confirmation that we're looking for, that this is a valuation reset rather than the poorly performing business, is shown as the financials have increased over the last four years with earnings also improving. As I said, the current PE of 50 does make this an expensive stock at first glance. If the growth trend can continue, then it may merit the premium price tag. Using simply Wall Street, who have 9 analysts covering this company, shows that they expect consistent growth out to 2025, where revenue could be sitting at over £900 million, with earnings having a dip this year but expected to increase over the same period. The Six Pillar Financial Health Check passes 5 out of 6 categories, with only long term liabilities being flagged up. Looking into that concern in a little bit more detail, and it looks like it's a system error, as for the short and long term liabilities, it's pulled the same amount of assets of 444 million, which for long term liabilities is actually 848 million, so long term liabilities are well covered. The balance sheet health check only raises debt of 313 million as a cause of concern, with all other areas showing pass marks. One of the benefits of owning Decra is that this company can be classed as a dividend growth company. Since 2018 when the dividend was 25.5 pence per share, it has continually grown year after year to where it sits now at 44.89 pence in 2022, which is almost a doubling of the dividend and still well covered. Decra pay out twice a year, an interim payment in April and a final payment in November. The latest update by Decra in October mentioned that they remained on course to meet full year expectations despite a slow start to the year. The veterinary drug specialist said the first quarter trading had, as expected, been below the same period a year earlier. The firm attributed the weaker performance to tough comparatives, as it saw notable growth during the pandemic, when pet ownership boomed and prices increased. But the blue chip added that it remained confident to deliver against its own strategic growth drivers and that it would meet current market expectations for the full year much of which will be achieved in the second half. The firm which was which was updating on trading ahead of its annual general meeting added that the integration of two US acquisitions, Piedmont and Medfarmex, in July and August had been successful. Last month Decra reported a 14% jump in annual revenues to £681 million, with underlying operating profits ahead 9%, which attributed to strong organic growth across its markets. Using Decker's latest earnings release, we can get a little bit more detail on earnings and also able to dig in to see what the company's growth drivers are. What I like about the four areas of the business is that the species covered by each category varies. They have therapeutics for dogs, cats, poultry, pigs, horses and ponies, which when you think of the growth of pet ownership over a lockdown period, it's an area which should offer continuous growth for likely in the next decade. Profits have been growing for over 25 years, with the company making the correct decision in 2012 by disposing of their low margin service division, which led to a drop in top line growth, but profits actually accelerated from this point out. Gross operating margin has been consistent over the last 10 years, hovering between 50 to 60%, and their underlying operating margin growing from 20 to 30% and earnings per share has accelerated in the same 10 year period. Decra have a global footprint, having sales and marketing organisations in 25 countries and products available in 63 countries. Using tip ranks who have 4 analysts covering this company, we end up with an overall strong buy rating as 3 rated a buy and 1 hold, giving an average price target of £43.12, which would be about 61% increase from current levels. Stock number 2 is a small UK company called Zopfoams, who are a cellular material company. They manufacture and sell foams and licenses related technology for specialist markets worldwide. There's far too many chemically related terms to pronounce for me not to embarrass myself, but the foams that they produce serve in various markets such as air conditioning and ducting, automotive, biotechnology, composites and electronics. 
Over the last five years, the share price has fluctuated between a high of around £7 per share to below £2 per share. Right now it sits around £3.20, which would give it a market cap of £155 million, a P-E ratio of 27 and a dividend yield of, a, of about 2%. Looking over the last 12 months, the share price is down 27%. Since entering 2022, the share chart shows a strong downtrend, which has been followed by a double bottom and now looking to make higher highs and higher lows. Financially speaking, Zotforms has been a resilient performer as revenue and earnings have been flat in 2018 to 2020, but last year top line growth increased by around 20%, but earnings did take a hit in the process. In terms of analyst expectations, which we have three of, they're expecting revenue to be steadily increasing from the COVID lows all the way out to 2025 with an estimated revenue of 132 million with earnings of 11 million. Five out of six pass marks on the financial health check with the reducing debt being the only red flag. The balance sheet looks to be in a strong position. Short term assets of 69.5 million outweigh short term liabilities of 62.75 million and long term assets of 103 million well and truly outweigh long term liabilities of just 6.46 million. The balance sheet shows all areas of greener apart from debt of 44.7 million which was also flagged earlier. So forms do pay a dividend which as with most UK stocks are paid out twice per year, once in June and again in October. Payments have been growing from 2017 where it was 5.93 pence per share where it now sits at around 6.50 pence per share. Recent earnings were mainly positive as they see full year profit ahead of expectations after record Q3 sales. Third quarter revenue was ahead by around 27% on the same quarter last year and in year to date group revenues are around 24% higher. Soapform said it continues to benefit from its broad customer diversification and has seen continued resilient demand across most of its end market segments. Both revenues and margins are also seeing an increase in benefit from pricing actions implemented earlier in the year in response to cost inflation, as well as from a weaker sterling exchange, primarily against the US dollar, it said. The group added that demand into the final quarter remains encouraging and it has good visibility of the confirmed orders for the rest of 2022. Based on its current sales forecast and foreign exchange rates, and subject to there being no material disruption to the business, the board now expects adjusted profit before income tax to be significantly ahead of market expectations. Market expectations are for pre-tax profit of £9.3 million for the end of the year by 2022. And it does all sound really positive in regards to top and bottom line growing, but the one area which does keep popping up is the debt, which has increased to a net debt of around £38 million. Debt isn't the end of the world, but it all depends on its purpose, and a leverage ratio of 2.0 times isn't crippling. Breaking down revenue by geography, Zotforms has around 40% come from the rest of the world, 28% from Europe, 22% from North America, and 10% from the UK. Revenue by industry still has sports and leisure, accounting for nearly 40%, followed by 25% in product protection, and the smaller areas such as building, construction, transportation, industrial and medical making up the rest. Unfortunately, as this is a small cap stock, no one on tip ranks has a price target on this specific stock here. But the good guys at Google have a one year price target of £3.93, which would be a nice increase of around 30%. And finally, stock number three is Whitbread, who are a leading British hotel, restaurant and coffee shop operator. They currently have around 850 hotels under the Premier Inn brand, which are primarily located in the UK, but they have been expanded into Germany. Their restaurant and pub brands fall under Premier Inn, Beef Eater, Brewers Fair being the most notable. The five-year chart shows that this stock has been really struggling after a huge burst to the, to the upside from 2020, but since early 2021, the chart has been following a strong downtrend as various restrictions were in place at various times throughout 2021. Currently, Whitbread has a market cap of 5.25 billion, a PE ratio of 16.82, and a dividend yielding around 2.3%. On a one year basis, it's down around 7.5%, partly due to the fact that it's already been performing pretty poorly before the start of this year. But could this trend be broken, as we now have inserted a new higher high and a new higher low since October this year? Revenue and earnings have been all over the place, as the industry is closely aligned to travelling, which, as we know, has faced a torrid time. But as of 2022, Whitbread is back to making a profit after a huge loss in 2021. So hopefully now can be a defining turning point and back to the good old days for this business. 17 analysts are bullish on top line revenue growth, which should be close to 3 billion by 2025, with no expectations that Whitbread should be posting negative earnings like in 2021. Earnings are expected to deteriorate in the near term, but slowly rebound in the latter of 2023. We do have two areas for concern being flagged up here, which is the long-term liabilities and the interest coverage. But again, this looks to be a system error, as it's used the same asset amount of 1.3 billion, 
with a long-term assets of 8.4 billion, not the 1.3 that it mentions, and this covers the long-term liabilities of 4.8 billion. All green pass marks on the balance sheet, apart from debt of 992 million, which is fine as Whitbread have a huge cash position of 1.2 billion. Whitbread said the interim profits had exceeded their pre-pandemic levels, leaving the group significantly ahead of the wider UK market. Whitbread said that the first half statutory revenues had surged 104% year on year to 1.35 billion, helping the group swing from an interim statutory pre-tax loss of 19.3 million to a profit of 307.4 million. Adjusted pre-tax profits came to 271.9 million, up from a loss of 56.6 million in 2021. The FTSE 100 listed firm also reported adjusted basic earnings per share of 107 pence, up from a loss of 26.4 pence per share a year earlier, and declared an interim dividend of 24.4 pence, net debt widened from 60.2 million to 182.1 million. Whitbread said a declining independent sector has increased its, its growth potential in the UK and Ireland to 125,000 rooms and highlighted that in Germany, demand had recovered with the group seeing good trader momentum, making it confident in its ability to reach its long-term return on capital target of 10-14%. Chief Executive Alison Britton said, We delivered an outstanding trading performance in the first half of the year, with revenues and profit before tax above pre-pandemic levels. Our UK hotels traded well ahead of the market, benefiting from our investment to win commercial and operational initiatives that are continuing to drive growth. We're making good progress in Germany and remain focused on realising our full potential in this large and exciting market. Despite macroeconomic uncertainties, our current trading performance is strong and our business has proven its resilience in the previous downturns, with a robust balance sheet and significant growth potential in both the UK and Germany. We remain confident in the full year outlook and our ability to deliver long-term value for our stakeholders. Historically, Whitbread has been a fantastic dividend stock, but as of 2020, payments were stopped but have been resumed in 2022, which is a positive sign of course. Back in 2018, you'd be getting over £1 per share, whereas this year it would be around 34.7 pence for the financial year. Group performance was driven by their investing to win strategy over the last two years and well placed to capitalise on the strong market recovery in the UK and Germany. Adjusted pre tax profits in the UK were 270 million, but still reported a loss of 25 million in Germany. The UK aspect of the business seems to be performing exceedingly well, but the German market, which still had restrictions in place up to April 2022, should start to report a rebound soon. They've given a positive trading outlook as all lead indicators remain positive. The balance sheet is a net cash position of 182 million, a strong balance sheet underpinned by the success of their operating model and a continued focus on returns and disciplined capital allocation. And of course, a growing dividend is noted as it should grow in line with earnings. The current outlook on the business has them as the number one hotel brand in the UK with 844 hotels and 82,700 rooms. They've implemented a lean and agile cost model, driving market leading value proposition, noting that they have an initiative to save costs of 100 million by 2025. Bullish comments on the Germany aspect of the business as it's the fastest growing hotel network in Germany, which currently sits at around 42 hotels. TipRanks has 9 ratings here, with 8 buys and 1 sale, giving an average price target of £34.68, which would give you an increase of about 33% from current levels. And that'll sum up this month's 3 picks. I hope you enjoyed an overview into each of these companies, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers.